Hello, welcome to April's 30 day leak code challenge. Today's problem, check if a string is a valid sequence from root to leaves path in a binary tree. And the key here is root to leaves path. All right, so given a binary tree where each path going from the root to any leaf form a valid sequence, check if a given string is a valid sequence in such a binary tree. All right, so let's say we've been given a string from the concatenation of an array of integers, R, and that concatenation of all values of the nodes along a path results in a sequence in the given binary tree. All right, so we start from the root and say that we've been given an array of 0, 1, 0, 1. Uh, let's start at 0. We could see that a path like that does exist, 0, 1, 0, 0 1, um, on the left side of the nodes. It goes left, left, right, and so a path does exist, and we return true. What about this one? Let's say we've been given R of 0, 0, 1. We can check here, 0, 0, nope, that's not going to work, 0, 0, there's 1, but there's no 1, so therefore the path does not exist, this is false. Now this is the key here to this problem. Um, what if we've been given 0, 1, 1, and you can see that 0, 1, 1 does exist, but this is not a root to leaves path. It's just a root to some node path that, that, that does exist, but it doesn't, it's not considered true here because doesn't it's not a leaf right it's still it has still has children okay so usually with these binary tree problems um, you could solve them using like a depth first or a breadth first search uh, I decided to go with a breadth first search approach because that's what I'm usually more comfortable with uh, but a breadth first search could totally work here um, I'll go with two approaches that I found useful um, the first approach that I thought was all right how do we know that their path exists? And say that we reach a child, or I'm sorry, a leaf. Okay, a leaf is one that has no, has does not have children. Um, we could check here to see, all right, have we reached the depth um, that equals the length of the string? So here the depth would be four. Say, okay, we've reached the depth of four. Uh, we reached one with the leaf. And have we been able to get here? And how, how can we know if we've gotten here? Well, we could check um, using our depth from each depth first search call uh, to check the string and see if the value matches, right? So it's a little tricky um, at first, but all that really matters is if we had a variable outside that said, okay, if we reach the depth and it reaches all our conditions that it's a child, the depth equals the length of the string and and well, yeah, just, just the fact that we've been able to get here, that means it's true. That means something like that exists, right? So let's think about that. Um, let's just start with saying, we're gonna start with initializing a vari variable here, a self variable, and we'll call that found, right? And if this equals true at any point that we said it's true, then, then that's that. Then we can just return that afterwards. So let's start by writing a function. And what I'm gonna pass is, the node as well as the depth, right? And just to initialize a couple of things here, let's say that we want to set the length of the array. That's gonna basically be the depth and also starting depth, which will equal zero, right? So what's gonna be our base case here? So specifically like, what do we do like to check if we should return a true or false. Like how do we stop our recursion, right? So usually with these kind of things, it's like if not node, then we return false. Like if there's no node here, then we just return, like that's that. But this is a little bit trickier, right? Because there's two conditions. Like what if we have not reached a leaf, but we're starting to exceed the length of the string? Well, if that's the case, then that should not happen, right? Um, if our depth is, we want to say, greater or equal to n, because remember, uh, depth is going to be starting at zero, and uh, we're going to go by the zero index. So if it's got to be, if it's greater or equal to the n, then we return false, right? So for now, let's just keep it there. Um, moving down the line, I have to think about, okay, now we want to call it to the left, and now we want to call it to the right. 
Um, but how do we know that we want to do that? So first thing we can check is, all right, is the value equal to the array depth? So meaning, okay, at this point that we're calling this recursion, like, is the value equal to the depth? Because if it's not, then we can just stop here. We don't need to even, re like, call another recursion, right? So if, if it is, then we need to do that. We have to say, all right, L, DFS node dot left, and we'll say depth plus one. Same here, R equals DFS node dot right, and depth plus one. Okay, great. So specifically, this is interesting, right? Because how do we know at what point we want to return a true then? Like what indicates that we want to return a true? And the way that I eventually came up with the solution is, okay, well, I think we should start checking to see if we want to see if our found should be switched to true if we've reached a child. And we can do that at any point point here if the if there's not a node okay and if the depth let's say is um, well it'd be still greater or equal to n because we're calling underneath this child okay if, if that's true then we can return true so say that we reached like this bottom one here like we want to check okay uh, have we are we exceeding our length and if there's no node what about right We've exceeded our length, and there's no node. Okay, so that's a point where we say, all right, let's check. Let's check here if uh, all our conditions are met. Okay, so if at this point, we've gone to this point, um, if L and R are true, well then, we've gone to this point so that self.found should be switched to true then, right? Because how do we even get here? If we've somehow managed to get to true, true at this point, that must mean that all our conditions have been set. So at that point, we can just set our variable to true and we'll still call this rest of the recursion, but at that point, it doesn't really matter because we'll never set this back to false. So, th so that's it. Um, we call our depth for search left and right, like we usually do for binary tree. And let's just call that here. We'll call it with the root and we'll call it with our start depth. And then what? Just return our stuff.found. And let me make sure this works. I might have missed something. Okay, so it looks like our test case has worked. Let me just submit. All right, great. So that's been accepted. Now, obviously, this isn't the only solution. It's kind of a weird hacky way. Um, it was accepted, but I did find another solution that I thought was more clear. Like, so let's say we didn't have this quote unquote global variable. Okay. And we didn't want to use that. We just want to call it like a traditional recursion method. Um, so to do that, we'd still have to uh, have our depth first search function here. And let's think about uh, at what point could we just return our call? Like we don't need to make any more calls. Well, let's see, there's three main conditions, right? The first condition is that the value doesn't equal the depth array. Um, so something like this, like zero, one, like that could immediately say we can just return because uh, that's, that's, that's not gonna work. Uh, what else? What if it exceeds the length? That also doesn't work, right? Because if you've exceeded the length, then um, Whatever we hit at the end, it doesn't matter because we know that that's never going to work. And finally, um, the uh, one more. Finally, there was one more. Well, okay, let's start writing and see if I start coming with it. So let's let's start with the three conditions that are going to return a false, right? So if if um, no dot depth does not equal the uh, valid, sorry, I'm messing up here. 
array dot depth array depth does not equal our current value or um, depth is greater or equal to n or and I, I'm pretty sure it's just or if, if there's no node right because if we come to a point where there's no node then then we sh should we just return a false not node and I'm pretty sure that's right now we need to figure out what's the condition where we would return a true and that's a little bit trickier how would we do that okay well first off um, the depth has to equal the node that we're that we're hitting and it must be a child and it must be a leaf right so no dot right or we can just say not no dot right and not no dot left so if we hit this point um, we could pretty much check if this is correct and I, what I'm realizing is if this if it was able to pass this condition, then we don't even need this equals, right? The only thing we need to check really at this point is have we hit our depth? And I'm pretty sure that's right. Like if we just say if our depth equals n minus one, like we've hit this point, then we could return a true. So let's kind of set it up the same way with a depth for search here. We'll say, uh, turn our no dot left and do that plus one. And we'll do the same thing for the right side. And what do we return? We want to return uh, L or R, right? And all that would mean is instead of this self initialized variable here, I'm going to return what we find with the root and start depth. Hmm. And the reason I did L or R is just think about it as long as we hit one true. Once we make our calls back, as long as one of those paths were true, we're going to return that true all the way back up, right? So it doesn't matter what any of this other stuff brings. As long as one of these is true, it's going to go back up, just like kind of how I set it up before. Um, I just need to make sure that I've actually set. Oh, okay. So none type did not work. Uh, no. So I'm pretty sure that's just another ordering issue as well. There, okay. <laughs> so that's fun. Um, I knew I knew this, but I forgot. You gotta check if the node doesn't exist first, then you gotta check if we've exceeded our depth, and then we should check, all right, if the do these not equal each other, because of course this function won't work without um, the node itself. So, okay. Uh, hopefully that um, hopefully that was a clear explanation. Honestly, I confused myself. Uh, maybe I'll clean this up later, but let's end it here for now.